<laughs> Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today we're going to be exploring Flipper Zero's firmware. One of the things I really enjoy about this device is its hackability, and part of that is because the firmware is open source under a GPL3 license, my favorite of the GPLs. This allows people to view the code, download the code, manipulate the code, build their own firmwares, and then distribute those firmwares. And it's the foundation or the reason why we have all these community firmware available. But it's not just for really cool, awesome developers. We can also benefit as individual users. We can play around with our Flipper Zeros, and we can do our own builds, add our own for, uh, you know, applications, do all kinds of weird stuff. So let's hop in and let's see what's possible with this Flipper Zero firmware. So I'm on the GitHub page, I'm going to go to code, and I'm going to grab that repository, and then we're going to move on over to the terminal. But a lot of folks asking, uh, you know, what I'm using here, and this is just Linux using a Linux terminal, so this is the power of commands. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to do some of this stuff yourself. Uh, in Windows as well, it's just going to look a little different. You can also just do it in a file manager. This is the way I just am more comfortable. So I'm going to use git and we're going to clone this repository. Uh, and I'm just going to drop that URL in there. Very small repository, less than 100 megabytes uh, because we're really just building very small firmware here. Uh, very small internal storage for the Flipper. So we're going to move to Flipper Zero firmware. And in here, we're going to start looking at our, our structure. So if you're not very familiar with looking at uh, source code, there are, oh, it can be a little intimidating. There's a lot going on here. So there's a lot of folders. These are going to contain a lot of different information. But the first thing we want to do is look at readmes or .md files. So, uh, you know, here we can see that there's a code of conduct. There's a coding style and a contributing uh, readme. These are all going to be helpful if you're looking to try and put your code back up uh, into the main repository and you're going to have to read those to make sure that you're you're using the right style uh, that you're contributing in the proper way. There's also a just general readme here uh, but and you know even this license is actually a readme so I'm sure that's like the GPL3 license there. Uh, I, I really want to check out the documentation though. So there I feel like there's a lack of documentation online and I think the Flipper team knows that they've been holding off on putting a lot of this documentation out on like the official website because it changes so much as things are developing and they haven't even really hit like a, a full release yet we're still kind of in beta as far as i can as far as i i see it you know uh so here we have a lot of different information about the flipper that is super handy and i see people asking a lot of questions uh on you know the the various places on even github itself but on the discord and uh and the reddits and all there's asking a lot of questions a lot of these questions can be answered by reading through uh, a bunch of this these readme files i, I think they're just kind of interesting in general i mean it even goes as far as to give information about uh, how the the file formats let's say like the infrared file format is structured so they give an example um you know you can see that you can actually write your own file if you have the proper information uh, and it also talks a little bit about adding to the uh to, to the the universal remotes and and different stuff so it's it's pretty cool there is a lot a lot of good information in here and uh it's really helpful stuff so if you've been having problems and you're a little bit concerned download this source code the source code is incredibly small it's not going to take a lot of space up on your computer and uh you'll be able to you know find a bunch of really fascinating information uh what i want to talk about right now though is the fbt command or the flipper build tool so i am going to open that up and we're going to take a look so like i said fbt stands for flipper build tool and this is a really awesome tool the Flipper team has put together that makes things significantly easier uh, to, to run uh, a lot of these build scripts and build commands. And then also, 
uh, do things like build out separately applications and resources like animations. Uh, it automatically will update your, uh, your Git environment for you unless you uh, ask it not to do that. Uh, there's just a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, I actually made a video about using the command line and using a more standard program like miniconf, but you can actually use FBT CLI and you'll start this Flipper CLI session. Uh, so it, I mean, really there's, there's a lot going on. Uh, like I said before, you know, so we have the, um, FAP distribution. So this will build them and, uh, compile your, uh, applications as FAPs. Uh, as well as things like, you know, you can flash using, I think, like GPIO pins, or you can flash using USB. Uh, flash USB full, I guess, is one I have to start playing around with. And we'll, we'll play around with that in a second, actually. But there's a lot of possibilities here, and FBT is the backbone of this. Uh, you know, some of this is beyond my scope. I don't really understand Clang as much, or Clang formatted, stuff like that. But there, there's a lot of possibilities. And let's go back here. So let's take a little glimpse here at what's going on uh, with, with this with this firmware. And let's see what let's just try something fun, right? So let's go over to assets. And this is where a lot of like the, the different animations where the, the slideshow I think is like got like the opening scene that comes up when you first uh you know start up your flipper. Icons are interesting because the icons are actually what build up the majority of the GUI. Uh, you know, it's not, they're not flat scenes that most of the time it's built up of and composed of various, <clears throat> um, you know, segments. So let's say uh, I, I want, today I want to, I want to just play around with something. Let's play around with Passport because it's an easy one to show up. So here we have the different icons. So we can actually change the icon of our Flipper Zero. Uh, if it's happy, you know, sad, <clears throat> we can customize and create our own little icon, little animation here. And I think that's really fun. Uh, really, uh, one that's a little easier to, to play with, I think immediately is gonna be these bottom and left. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to rename them and back them up. So I would like to move Passport uh, if you're not familiar, to, the rename on the command line is basically you're just moving it from one name to another. Uh, and I'm just going to call that backup. It doesn't matter what it is. It just can't be <clears throat> uh, dot ping anymore. And I'm also going to move passport left uh, to passport left dot backup as well. So you can see that those are no longer being recognized as pings, right? They're, they're, they're a different color. They're not being recognized as pings. Uh, so let's say I just got rid of those and now I want to go build the firmware. You know, I got rid of those and so we don't need them anymore. And I'm just going to run the build command. We're going to do uh, FBT flash USB. And I'm going to say, well, why not? So what's going to do first things first is it always keeps the tool chain up to date. So if it notices the tool chain is out of date, and I think the tool chain hasn't been installed the on, on like first build, you'll always bring in the new tool chain. Uh, so it's going to start by installing the tool chain. And that's going to take a little bit of a second. And then it's going to go through and it's going to compile everything that we've created. And this might actually take a minute or two. So, uh, you know, pay no mind and hang out for a second. We're just going to fast forward through this. So you'll see we ran into an error here. Uh, and let's walk through this. I want to try to explain what's going on. So we ran into an error. Let's look where it says error. What this is saying is that the file passport C, and then this is the, uh, the, uh, the path to this file, uh, it ran into an error. Uh, now this error, uh, is basically that it's not finding the file that it wants and it's like well i mean there's other files in that folder are you sure you didn't want to use this but no uh we wanted to use this or it wants to use this uh as but we've we've removed those files right so they're not getting recognized anymore and so it's saying in line 66 and also here in line 67 uh, that we're running into an error because it's not able to find passport left and passport bottom so 
let's see if we can fix that. So let's take our text editor and I'm going to uh, go to applications, uh, settings, dolphin passport and passport C. And we're going to go down to line, was it 66 and 67? So it needs to. So uh, what this wants us to do, multi-pass, is, is that what they're calling it in here, the multi-pass? All right. It's funny. They, they, can't, they can't stick to one thing. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to comment this out. Oh, no. No, I forgot to insert. Uh, so in C, uh, we have two comment possibilities that I'm aware of, which is, you know, you can double slash. So I could do this and it would comment out one line. But you can also do a close and an open. Uh, and so if you do forward slash asterisk uh, and th then forward or, you know, asterisk forward slash, everything in between those is going to get uh, commented out. So we're going to do that. We're going to write this. We're going to write and quit this. And so let's let's try. Actually, I'm going to go and I'm going to clean the build. We're going to go FTT text C and it's going to get rid of everything that has been built so far. We're going to start fresh. Uh, and we're going to say PT, uh, flash, USB, full. And again, uh, what this is going to do is just build through. You can see it's already built the tool chain once. So we already have that. Now it's just building through all the applications that, you know, everything that it needs to build. Uh, and we're going to come back in a minute when it's all done this. All right, so we're back, and what's happening now is the flipper is just sending over, it's chunking up and sending over the, the resources that we need. So resources, uh, and as well as uh, the .dfu and the .fuf and whatever else it needs. Uh, this doesn't take all that long, but uh, what it doesn't do is show the update animations. You're not gonna, see, it's not gonna look like anything's happening on your flipper. But yes, indeed, it is updating. Uh, do not, do not fret. And uh, also make sure that you're on the main menu. Uh, if you have any applications open, then it will uh, not be able to automatically update or push the update. Or I was gonna say, like you know, touch update. Uh, so make sure that you're on the, the main screen. It just makes things easier. And then what it's going to do is it's going to just bring you to the normal update cycle uh, where it's got the update icon and a little the little uh, bar. So right there, uh, that that uh, touch build install that flag uh, means that it is now going through the process on my flipper where it has the little icon. It's updating and it has a status bar and it's just going to update through as it as uh, you know, it usually will. And this is going to take another couple of minutes. So we're going to fast forward time and I'm going to come back in a second. So our update has gone through and we are now on our flipper zero and I'm going to quickly hop over. We're going to use the right key. And now you can see that the, the standard framing of the passport has changed. And um, that's because I've been able to manipulate this firmware to change the, the fact that it even asks for those images. Uh, now I'm going to go back and we're going to flash uh, something different in there. We're actually going to add an image. Uh, and this is not going to be a pretty, a pretty site, but we're going to add an image back in. So I'm going to switch back over to the terminal and we are going to go back and we're going to fix what we've done in a certain sense. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to change that file uh, that is settings and I believe dolphin passport and passport. So we're going to change the C file. We're going to go back to lines 66 and 67. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to, oh, no. We're going to uh, insert comment there. And I'm going to just comment out the passport bottom. Uh, so we're going to leave that commented and I'm going to go and I'm going to add 
a file from someplace else. So I'm actually going to copy a file from my home directory under a different folder. Uh, and we're gonna update this. We're gonna send this. Uh, we're gonna move that over. Okay, so now let's go to uh, assets, icons, and passport. And we're gonna look at this and we're gonna see that we have a new frame here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that frame or rename it basically passport left. And we're gonna just get rid of backup. We're just gonna name it passport left. So this is the, the file name that it's expecting. Uh, and you can see now that we have uh, a new version of passport left uh, over here. And we're gonna rebuild and reflash that firmware again. So I'm going to this time try to uh, just, we're not gonna do a full update. I'm just gonna do FBT flash USB. And I think this is gonna like not push like resources and stuff. It's gonna be a little bit of a lighter upgrade. Uh, it's only going to build some of the, the necessary stuff. So we're going to take one second. I'll be back in a moment. Hmm. Oh, okay, so now I'm running into an error because the device is busy, uh, meaning that I still have the Qflipper app open, and so it's not going to be able to uh, automatically run. I, I think, ooh, let's try it one more time uh it might just tell me that everything is already on there uh and then it it might not manually or automatically <clears throat> start the, the pro okay here there we go there we go so yeah so the 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 tty was already being used so now we're gonna move on. It's gonna flash over the new .fuf, .dfu, and uh, .tar, I don't know, something else. It's gonna send over one more thing, I think. Uh, and then it should manually or automatically start the firmware update process. There we go. Okay, so we're updating. Uh, hopefully this one won't take too long to do. So we're back on the flipper and we're gonna check out the passport again. Aha, now this time I have, uh, I didn't even know exactly what image this was gonna be, but you can see I added a new image. Now obviously this is not set up to look nice or be cool or you know be like a functional addendum, but this is just to show that you can put whatever image in there you want uh, and it will build that and throw it in there. Uh, if, if I had replaced the bottom instead, it would have uh, only started drawing from, from that kind of spot right below the icon. So it would have just given us uh, ostensibly uh, just the top portion of this drawing or image. But yeah, so you can see we've made a, a mild modification to our Flipper Zero. So, you know, I hope that this is at least a starting point for you. This is a starting point for me, honestly, uh, in terms of getting down and dirty with customizing your own firmware, playing with it, uh, not necessarily to create new firmwares, new community firmwares, uh, but you can do stuff like just kind of create your own custom experience, something that's better for you as the individual user. And you can do this with honestly any of the community firmware as well. I could go and take Rogue Master and, uh, you know, take the source of that and alter it and change it in ways that make me feel better. Uh, about whatever it is, uh, whatever whatever is more comfortable with, for me, uh, or whatever I you know change different functionalities of the device. So thanks for hanging out. Sorry this was a little bit of a longer one, uh, a little bit uh, lower level stuff to to discuss. But uh, you know I I just think that it's fun that we can do this kind of stuff, and I think it's it's cool and it's uh you know it's a way to get yourself into learning some C learning uh, some Python. There's a lot of uh, Python involved in here, understanding how JSON works. There's just a lot, there's a lot possible here. And I, I think that this is where a lot of the learning can really occur. So if you enjoyed it, you know, hang out, have a, you know, more videos to watch. Uh, and, you know, thank you so much for sitting with me. I really appreciate it.